It was lonely in our valley and wild. But I guess that's what we wanted, Madge and I, when we came from Boston to take up this homestead here, about five miles from the town of Glen Ellen. The quiet suited me. I'm a poet, and there was plenty of time for thinking and writing. There weren't many interruptions in our lives, I can tell you that. But maybe the loneliness wasn't so easy for Madge. Madge was sometimes frightened by strange sounds in the night. And to tell the truth, so was I. A rabbit had been torn from one of my traps. Madge? It's been robbed. I what? What you gonna do? Be careful, eh? looking dog for these parts I've ever seen. Oh, he'll just move on or go back to wherever he came from. You touch him? Of course not. He didn't go away, and he wouldn't be touched. Do you know, I didn't know wolves were so big. It isn't a wolf, it's a dog. It smells like no dog I've ever seen. Well, it's a dog. You can tell by its color and markings. It's a big, mean dog. Looks like a wolf to me. All right. 
Why don't you call him Wolf? All right. Wolf. Wolf! In a few days, he stopped barking and growling at us. But he was still one very suspicious dog. Mine. Wouldn't it be something if we could just tame him down? Why? Why tame him? Why not just let him run? An animal like that won't serve a master. Sure he will. Just have to feed him, that's all. is going to buy your own cow. I don't know, Mrs. Johnson. I didn't think he likes milk. He's been giving most of it to Wolf all summer. By the way, how is that big dog? Oh, Walt just put a rope around him this morning. <laughs> is that mean from Captain? No, I don't think so, Benjamin. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> He's got this spear going on. Holy bobcat. He's wild. Oh, no, no, look at him. He got pedigree. I've seen dogs like him before. But trained rough by rough men. They hate ropes. And they don't let no one touch them. Except the man who touched them first. I'm going to feed Wolf. You want to come? No, I'm busy now. You, you go ahead. All right. Well? He's gone. Gone? Did you lose him? No. He must have chewed through his rope. finish its food before taking off. I guess he's more independent than you figured. Late in September, I had to take the Grand Pacific to sell some poetry in Spokane. We needed the money. I hope he likes your poetry. I think he will. He seemed keen on it. I shouldn't have to sit on it too long. Hey, if I sell enough, I'll bring you some milk cow. It's good to Spokane and back. Is this town big enough to have a butcher shop, you reckon? Yep. So Spokane.
something beautiful. What? What happened to you? It's a long Why? story. Look at you. I'm fine, I'm fine, but I'm starved. Come on, let's go in. Where did you find him? Yeah. There's not a milk cow here. Oh. Here. Oh, come on. Now, if he gets lost again, people will know who he belongs to. He wasn't lost. It's going home. Walt, look. He didn't snap my hand away might stay now. It's been nearly a month. Travel, doesn't he? Yeah. I figure he must cover between 100 and 150 miles a day. Well, that ain't just dodging. Eh, homing instinct, I reckon. You know, you pay out enough money for 10 dogs. <laughs> Only thing is, you, you get the same dog each time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think his life was like before? I don't know. Hard. Well, then he's better off with us. Then it's easier for him. He's lost some of his spirit, though. Like he'd made friends with the rope. Perhaps it's time to take it off again. By now, that wild, beautiful dog had become part of our lives, part of us. Since every man whose soul is not a clod have visions and would speak, if he had loved and been well nurtured. 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 Come on, come on. That's right. That's right. You're my muse, boy. By midwinter, he seemed to actually like living with us, or at least with Madge. By now, we'd come to think of Wolf as ours. But sometimes, during those long winter nights, I wondered. Darling, how long have we had Wolf? A year and a half. You hear that, boy? You're part of the family now.
You're still light as a feather. <laughs> it's all right, Benjamin. It's your Uncle Skip. Well, don't blame him. You look like a stuffed bird in that suit. <laughs> well, come on, come on in. I'll have the clown like these days. Not bad, not bad. Well, I hope you've given up burn for those frozen paystakes that never work out. Well, I got me a big-time mail contract with the federal government. Run me down south for a while. Oh, here, I'll get you something. No, 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 no. I can't tell you. How great is to be back here again, I can't tell you now. Well, how come along can you stay? Oh, day or two, no more. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Hey, Benjamin, come on here and join us for a while. Hey, that was a little holy terror, huh? <laughs> Got to make it to the sled driver after all, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> So there I was. Can you see it? There I was. Half starving and froze so bad you could have you could have cut my spine bow with my belt buckle. I had no choice but to kill my dog, my only friend in the whole world, and eat it. What did he taste like? Ah. The fact of the matter is I didn't really do it. I tried, mind you. Ah, but he was quicker than any bullet man ever made, and so thank God he got away from me. Bagged a moose only fifteen minutes later. But old Brown was gone for good and I've been a lonesome ever since. It's a terrible thing what hardship will make a man do. And it's a terrible thing you telling them stories like that. Uh, Come on, now off to bed with you. Skip, you really have to go tomorrow, eh? Ah, uh, rain or shine, the U.S. mail got to be delivered. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Come on. Come on. And don't you get any ideas about taking them back north? Uh, I'd only toughen them up a bit. <laughs> well, now that you're a mailman, you ain't got no excuse for not writing. Ah, uh, got to learn how to write first. <laughs> Where's that rabbit? Where's our dinner, you? Where's our milk cow, you? I'm tired of dragging milk from Mrs. Johnson's. Right here. When did you finish it? Why didn't you show it to me? I was waiting till we could be alone. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Give it, give it, give it. Let me read it to you. Sit down. Huh. Hello, Benji. Hello, Mr. Irvin. Cool day for autumn. Ah, like one of the days back in the Klondike. Huh? This is my uncle, Mrs. Johnson's Klondike brother. Ah, uh, yes, Miller, Skiff Miller. That's my name. Uh, I'm Walt Irvin. Uh, uh, and uh, this is my wife, Madge. Pleasure to make both your acquaintances. Pleasure. Uh, uh, uh. Roan! Oh, carefully, not use the thing. Hi, how are you, boy? How are you? How are you? Ah, oh, uh, this is my dog. His name is Brown. You've been taking it easy, huh? Oh. And you shouldn't be wearing one of these. Hey, you. Put the tag on my dog. How do we know he's your dog? How do we know she's your wife? Well? You wouldn't take him back to the Klondike, would you? Yep. But I've heard such terrible things about the hardships up there. And most of it's true. We've had him for two years. Lady, what can I tell you? He's my dog, right, Benji? Is Wolf the dog you almost ate, Uncle Skiff? Oh, there was no game, Benji. I was starved out. I would have died first. Maybe. But then you never really choose yourself, then, did you? We have a home to offer him without hardship. What have you got to offer him? Grub when I got it. And when you don't? No grub. And work? And plenty of it. Which is a darn sight better than staying in front of a fire as somebody's pet. Look, you can't prove he's your dog. Hey, Benji. I don't reckon there's anybody stopping us from taking the dog right now. Wait. Walt, maybe it is Mr. Miller's dog. I mean, Wolf seemed to have recognized him. Why don't we let Wolf decide? Ah. Uh, ah, uh, he's a good companion. Only pal I've had in the world didn't turn disloyal on me. Nurse to myself that I did on canned milk. Used to suck my finger. <laughs> <laughs> he's had a hard life. He's earned a place in front of the fire. Well, Mr. Miller? Okay. 
We'll let him decide. Now you two sit over there, and me and Benji will back down the trail real casual-like. Amen. This is a matter that usually turns a woman's heart soft, so if you don't mind... Don't please. worry, Mr. Miller. Okay. You don't call after him, and we won't call after him. And Benji won't say anything either, will you, Benji? We kept hoping for a long time. Maybe he'd come back. But that was the last time we saw Wolf. <laughs> 